Welcome to the Wine Zone. I'm Conrad Edgebeck and this is Pro and Con. My guest today is Julian Gervreau. And I said that great Gervreau. You say it. Julian Gervreau. That's, Gervreau. What, the, Thank that's you. what the Americans say. He is the Director of Sustainability uh, for Jackson Family Wine. So, um, Director, so you don't make wine. No. I you do don't not sell make wine. Aside from drinking it, Julian, what do you do? Well, I drink a lot of beer as well. Uh oh. Um, but, I hope uh, Jackson Family uh, Wines makes the there's, beer. There's a good saying in, in the wine industry that it takes a lot of beer to make great wine. Yeah, but that's for wine makers. That's <laughs> not for you guys. I have a lot of things for sustainability. Wine so, okay. Uh, so, so tell me what you do. So I, uh, I, I I run the sustainability program at Jackson Family Wines, and what sustainability is, and how we define sustainability, is uh, focusing on making the highest quality wines in the most responsible manner. That's it. Okay, no. In a nutshell. Okay, in a nutshell. So it's, many folks, myself included, think of sustainability as somewhere down the scale, mm -hmm. below organic and biodynamic. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you explain how putting chemicals into the ground is more sustainable than the alternative? Sure. So, I mean, I think what you're referring to is more of a conventional approach. Well, yeah, but sustainability doesn't guarantee no chemicals. Organic and biodynamic does. So that's why I'm just, just sort of, there's conventional, which is really not conventional, it's modern. Conventional in the old days was organic because they had no right. chemicals, right? To modern conventional is chemicals, sure. just machines, chemicals, blah, 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 you know, factory, right? Um, but, but you're not doing that. You're doing sustainable and that's, that's much higher level. That's much more conscience, mm -hmm. much more conscience in that. But explain to me how that's better than organic or, sure. or, or biodynamic. And what you're referring to is really on the farm as a, as a farming principle. And sustainability goes beyond the farm. Mm -hmm. So from our perspective and, and the way we define sustainability is kind of a focus on integrating um, good business practices with good environmental and good um, community and, and people stewardship practices as well. Right. So when we look at our business and, and the way we run our business and the way we make our wines, our focus is on really being around for the long term. And as a family owned company, um, who our founder, when he founded uh, Jackson Family Wines in the early 1980s, 84. His, 82? 82, 82. 82. His focus was was really on building a company that would stand the test of time that his family and, and his children and his children's children could inherit. And the the business principles associated with sustainability around water conservation, energy efficiency, renewable energy is finding those aspects in those areas where um, good business practice goes hands in hand with being a good long-term steward of the land and of the communities in which we do business. And now you're doing that for about 40 wineries. Correct. Right? <laughs> Around the world. Correct. Okay? In, in, in the United States, yes. in California, in France, mm -hmm. in Italy, and I think in South America? Uh, we, have a, we have a winery in Chile. In as Chile, well as right? South Africa. South Africa. And Australia. And Australia. Now, I'm, I don't get it. Our, what are we, top liver here in Canada? <laughs> <laughs> We're still exploring. Oh, you're still exploring. Well, yeah. okay. we moved north uh, three years ago and, and purchased property in Oregon. Yes, you did. We're absolutely, very, absolutely. very excited about Oregon. Absolutely. So that's a step closer. So now I've got to tell you, when I, when, I, when I first got the first piece of paper uh, uh, about you and La Crema, etc., it talked about Sonoma Coast and um, the cool climate region mm -hmm. of Sonoma. And I thought to myself, my God, you know, in Ontario and a little bit in, in, in British Columbia and the Okanagan, we're the hottest parts of Canada. Cool. We are cool climates. <laughs> when I think of California, I don't think of cool climate. <laughs> I think, so tell me this. Sorry, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead, go ahead. Well, that's the marine influence. Sure. Yeah. Well, you're close, yeah. yeah. Because up, up no north in British Columbia, the marine influence is such that you can't even right. ripen them. <laughs> it doesn't, you can't get some. Mirrors, reflectors, <laughs> big <laughs> magnifying glasses. So, is sustainability expensive? Are you, are you saving money by being sustainable, or are you spending money to achieve the goals of sustainability? Yes. <laughs> the short answer is yes. Uh, sustainability is an investment and it is a long-term investment and I think one of the beauties of working for a family-owned company like Jackson Family Wines is you are working for um, people who understand that it is a long-term investment. We are not 
it's like a Ponzi scheme. You're not always putting more money in than you're getting back we're out of it. Always plow, we're always plowing money back into the company. Yeah. And we're always we're always putting money back into um, you know, building a business that again will be here for the long term. So let me give you an example. I, I was just um, gonna say, yeah. So, so pick pick one example, uh, pick any winery and and you walk in and what's your sort of checklist of sure. what you do at that winery? So water is kind of a big deal in California in the West where we're boy, oh boy. still in the midst of, uh, of, of over four, almost five years of, uh, of record-breaking drought that we haven't seen in general. I think winery owners are soon gonna get Kevlar vests. Yep, everybody's freaking out. Yeah. So it's the long and the short of it. Yeah. Um, and so when I walk into a winery and I walk into a vineyard, the focus is on, you know, as an agricultural product, we obviously we rely on, on water as a resource both to grow our grapes and to make our wines. And our focus is on saving that. And so what are you telling people? Hey, don't don't use so much, or like every second day, or well, there's there's an interesting. Let's not use drip. Let's use yeah. let's use this other thing. Well, there, so there's an, there's a very interesting um, synergy between high quality grapes and water efficiency in the vineyard. Mm -hmm. uh, grape vines mm -hmm. don't require as much water as, as many people would think. And so we practice a, a, a practice called deficit irrigation in most places where we give the grapevines actually just a little bit less than what they need. So Use they have to struggle. Three foot down sensors that tell you when you're when they're starting to get stressed and we, then you give them enough. Yeah, and we actually use uh, technology that measures um, the actual sap flow activity oh, in, in oh, the plant. It. Through the through the leaf? Or, uh, or we, do the, we, put a, the, we put a collar around the uh, around the, oh, around the vine, Jeez. and so we essentially let the grapevine raise its hand and say, "Hey, I'm thirsty." And what we've seen is uh, uh, not just water savings associated with this initiative, but some very impressive quality improvements as well. Because if you're not overwatering your grapevines, you're creating uh, grapes that are a way more distinct. Um, yeah. I take this on an off topic for a second, non sequitur. I remember being in. Um, in New Zealand, um, in one of the river valleys, and they said that the river, the river is so dry, the stones go down so much, and sand below that, like really, it's three hundred feet down. Yeah. You, there's no water, yeah. so so you don't. You, but they plant grapes there. They don't just water the grapes, irrigate them. They fertigate them. <laughs> okay, so basically, what you've got there is almost like hydroponic mm -hmm. culture. I, I mean. You, you got to think of every possibility. Can you see the possibility of you know um, greenhouses or closed buildings with lights and and all these little vines on tubes with hydroponic, you know, sort of like the reverse of milking machines? Yeah, yeah that's that's not the image that I'm sure people think about when they uh, when they want to plan their trip to wine country. But yeah, no. um, you know, the thing about human ingenuity is that anything it's, is it's it's amazing. At, at this point. For us, that's that's certainly not a reality. Um, but our focus is on protecting the land yeah. and really conserving what we have, so we can continue to make high quality wines long into the of future. Course, of course, you, I think you've got a couple of properties there with windmills, mm -hmm. and you've got a huge number of solar panels mm -hmm. all over the place. Yep, we're uh, we're the largest solar generator in the American wine industry. Interesting, interesting. I was once talking with an Italian guy, and he had he had equal equal parts of his land where where one was solar things to mm -hmm. one was olive trees and one was grapevines yeah. and I said which one makes you the most money because he was selling back to the grit yeah. he said by far the yeah. grapes make the most yeah. so we, we we basically we generate enough uh, solar energy every year to offset the annual usage of about 1300 homes yeah and that's about 35% uh, of our annual um, uh, wine making consumption so, 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 sorry, you're covering 35 percent, or you're covering all of it, and you still have enough left? No, no, we're covering no. about 35. That's still that's, that, that's, that's, that's great. Yeah, that's so great. Six and a half megawatts, which is about 1,300 homes of annual electricity. Yeah. And when we were building our our systems, we put we put for the most part we put everything on the roof because land is pretty valuable in one country, and we didn't want to um, we didn't want to put solar panels. On oh, of course not on land on the ground, but we did have some, some very uh, industrious solar vendors trying to convince us I to bet, I bet, I bet. said, you're got to remember the industry. Yeah, 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 there are a lot of them out there. So what's your next goal? What's the next level of achievement for you? So the interesting thing about sustainability is it is really a journey. There's, there is, um, the destination kind of, it's, it's a moving scale and you're always striving to continue to get better. Yeah. Uh, and one of the key components that we look at in the field is 
um, the concept of transparency. Consumers today, they want to support companies that they know share their values. And in order to do that as an organization, you have to become a lot more transparent in how you do business, what you share. And uh, our next big step is uh, in July, we're going to be publishing our first ever sustainability report, which okay. is, um, it'll be a long document. I don't expect for you to read it. But right, but well, you're not talking about, you're not talking about more information on the, on the, on no, the it's about, you know, whatever bentonite or sulfite or no, uh, it's, what we do for the environment or who we're supporting with this. No, no. Yeah. It's just, it's just all behind the scenes. And what that, what that does for us is, is within that report, we have a series of five year goals. Mm -hmm. We want to reduce our greenhouse gas intensity by 25%. We want to reduce our water intensity by 33%. We want to increase our, our renewable energy portfolio as well. And with those goals, we're essentially opening ourselves up to an ongoing discussion right. with our stakeholders, the people who live in and around the communities where we do business, our customers, our employees, and focusing on how can we work together to continue to be a better company. Right. Now, you're a statistics guy, right? Somewhat. Somewhat. So, if you were to, to achieve the kind of success that I think you're hoping to, and say you could reduce. Let's just let's 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 be very conservative. If you could reduce the company's costs mm -hmm. for all these things by five percent, how much would you be saving the Jackson family? <laughs> I, I could justify a few more people in my department if I were able to save. Uh, and 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 at a mil at a million a person, wow. Yeah, that's right. right. You I guys, mean, somebody's got to come. Somebody's, yeah, right. <laughs> um, yeah, no. I mean, it's a, it's a really interesting point you bring up because. For sustainability really to be sustainable, it has to make good business sense. And I approach all of all of these big problems around, you know, climate change and energy efficiency and water shortages with a focus on how can we do the right thing for the business while also doing the right thing for the planet and for society. And if you can find those synergies, then that's pretty good job security. Well, it's not just pretty good job security, it's pretty good job satisfaction. Yeah. I'm pretty happy. Yeah, so tell me, okay, let's talk about this wine. Tell me about this wine here. What we've got here is the La Crema Sonoma Coast 2014 oh. Chardonnay. And, and it's two ninety nine in the grocery stores, right? Yep. No. no. <laughs> it's I think it's twenty well, bucks. It's a little more than that. Twenty bucks at uh, vintages. Uh, I think it's about twenty five. Twenty five. Twenty nine. Maybe even twenty nine. Yeah. I'd look off camera and say twenty nine. Twenty nine. We're twenty nine. We're gonna go with twenty nine. With twenty nine. Twenty nine ninety five. Yeah. At and, uh, uh, vintages yeah. in Ontario and at more reasonable prices in other parts of the world. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> Come visit us and, and enjoy this in our tasting room. Uh, yeah, this is a this is a wonderful wine. The the most interesting uh, thing I think about this wine is that it's uh, it's made by a winemaker who is uh, who's Canadian. She mm. she grew up here uh, in Ontario, right? And followed her passion for the grape and, and found herself in in Russian River Valley. Right, Canada. fantastic. Well, listen, thank you for coming and thank you for telling me about your sustainability, um, your your work. I, I I wish you a lot of success and and thus job satisfaction. Yes. And uh, come back and tell us about the results next time you're around. That sounds like a wonderful plan. Thank you. And you come back and, and watch us anytime. In fact, if you want a notification as to the next one, just click on the subscribe button below. Thank you very much. I'm Conrad Edgevick. This has been Pro and Con. See you next time.